Okay, I think this uh, works better. Good afternoon, uh, very welcome. Um, my name is Eddie Morris. I'm uh, since 1st of July rector at uh, uh, Institute IT Delft. And um, I would really like to welcome um, your excellencies here. I would like to welcome uh, the family. I think we have um, a very nice uh, representation here of uh, the different students, also of the, the colleagues from IT, as well as uh, an invited guest. But besides that, I would also very much uh, like to welcome all uh, the students and other f uh, viewers around the world who are also following this event uh, live uh, through uh, the internet. So welcome to you all. And uh, for me, this is the first time that uh, I have the honor to open uh, the academic year of IT Delft. So it, for me, it's also a very special occasion. And I'm happy to see so many uh, known faces, but uh, even more happy uh, to see so many unknown faces. And with that, I would uh, foremost uh, really like to welcome all the new students that are coming to IT Delft this year. So very welcome, and I hope that you are going uh, to start with this day, a very exciting uh, year, a year and a half to come. And I think uh, also looking at the faces, and I've also seen uh, the list of uh, where, where you're coming from, I think we have a very, very nice uh, diversity. And with diversity, I mean uh, from the different countries where you're coming from. So you're bringing here us, uh, I think, a treasure of uh, different uh, nationalities, which uh, different cultures, with different behavior, with different ideas. And I think with that, uh, you're going to enrich uh, our institute further with this uh, diversity and also with your ideas uh, about how to look at things, but also about solutions. Uh, we at IT Delft are very much looking forward uh, to help you to discover what this diversity means and to see also how you can use that in your education and training, but also in how you can uh, use that to support one another. So uh, I think that's an important side, but on the other hand, uh, what we also try to do at uh, IT Delft is uh, we try to um, use this education and training that we're providing to uh, further develop uh, the world. Now, important on the political agenda at the moment are the Sustainable Development Goals. And uh, I think uh, with those Sustainable Development Goals, uh, we are meaning that uh, we would like uh, to see how we can uh, really implement uh, the measures and the strategies that are needed to bring them a step further, but also how can you monitor and follow if the goals are being achieved. And with that, uh, I think uh, it's also good uh, to start introducing uh, the, one of the main lectures, because you will have uh, two today. And uh, the first lecture will be given by uh, Rob van Tulder, 
And um, Rob van Tulwe is a professor of uh, international business at uh, Rotterdam School of uh, Management from uh, Erasmus University in uh, Rotterdam. And uh, he's co-founder of um, the Department of uh, Business Society Management, which is a world leading department on uh, the issues surrounding sustainability. And uh, this word sustainability, I think, is uh, the connecting uh, word, uh, both uh, between uh, what we do at IT Delft, but also what Rob is uh, going to talk about. Uh, but maybe to inform you a little bit more on, on his background, uh, Rob is also at the moment an uh, academic director of the Partnership uh, Resource Center, uh, where they bring together leading NGOs, uh, firms and governments uh, in the study and management of cross-sector partnerships for the social good. And uh, again, uh, one of those uh, social goods is uh, water. Um, he's also founder of SCOPE, uh, which is an expert center of Erasmus University in international business and sustainability developments. And uh, one of the things that they do at uh, this institute is together with UNTAP that they uh, list actually uh, all uh, the international and transnational corporations uh, worldwide, which is um, always um, posted and published uh, in uh, the World Investment uh, Report. Uh, and uh, maybe that's uh, another topic that uh, later on uh, during the receptions, I think it's good to have a discussion with uh, Rob van Tolder, because what we also see as one of the challenges is how can we get the investments in such an order that we are also able to implement the measures and strategies that are important to achieve those uh, sustainable development goals. Rob is also uh, teaching executive courses for managers and academics on international strategy uh, management. And uh, of course he published a lot of papers and books, but I just want to mention one because I thought uh, that this is a, a very interesting one because uh, at IG Delft we are also very much engaged with that. And the title of that one is uh, Solving Big Problems Through Partnerships. And first of all, I think uh, water is one of the, the wicked problems, but uh, what I like is, is this addition of partnerships. And uh, that means that um, actually uh, you can't solve wicked problems uh, by a single use, so you, you need this partnership. So I'm like very much looking forward on um, what Rob has to say about that. And uh, the lecture of uh, Rob for today that he will present is called uh, May You Live in Interesting Times, which I think is, uh, I'm not sure if it's a wish, but if it's not, then uh, let me translate this into a wish, and I, I wish that uh, all the students of uh, today will live, uh, say, an 18-month period that will be so interesting that they will remember that throughout their lives, and I hope that that's also the stepping stone towards uh, a new future. So welcome again, and I would like to invite Rob van Tilder for his uh, keynote speech. Thank you very much. Thank you for the introduction. Um, <clears throat> dear Rector, academic staff, dear Mayor, Your Excellencies, external guests, friends of the Institute, and of course in particular all those students and all the inspiring and aspiring students present today. Yes, may you live in interesting times. This is an English expression and it seems a blessing. But actually, it is also known as the Chinese curse. Uh, it is actually always used ironically. But the clear implication that uninteresting times of peace and tranquility are more life-enhancing than interesting ones. Interesting times usually include disorder and conflict. Uh, at the beginning of the millennium, the US military introduced an interesting acronym to further define the nature of these interesting times. They observe we are increasingly living in a so-called FUCA world, a world in which volatility, uncertainty, complexity and ambiguity is the new norm. A world of competing powers, unclear societal models, increasingly intertwined and facing sizable societal challenges. Note that the FUCA concept was introduced by the Americans one and a half decade before the Trump administration. <laughs> a FUCA world requires different mindsets from everyone involved. Why does this imply? What does this imply for water? We can take two positions: one in which we stress the negative change, 
and one in which we focus on positive change. <laughs> so a negative frame. Well, nearly a billion people worldwide lack clean drinking water. Unsafe water is the leading cause of sickness and death. Half of the world's population uh, of the world's hospital beds are filled with people suffering from water-related illnesses. Farmers fight for water in order to water their crops. In 2015, 2.4 billion people did not have access to adequate sanitation facilities. We have an abundance of water in the form of tsunamis, while at the same time a lack of water as the result of droughts and mismanagement. Water becomes bottled as a private good, which makes it a potential public good and a universal need into a commodity, from which people can be excluded also. Critics talk about manufacturer demand and confront individual consumers, in particularly in Western countries, with the irrationality of some of their choices. For instance, with the fact that tap water is up to 500 times cheaper than bottled water. Water becomes a political or a contested good. Water wars are fought between local communities and companies. Conflicts over water usage develop between upstream and downstream countries. But there are also positive friends. In 2015, for instance, 4.9 uh, billion people globally used an improved sanitation facility, which was a major advance in, in comparison to the past. Water is what we also call a merit good. These are goods or services whose consumption confer benefits on society that are greater than those for individuals. Water has, uh, has many so-called positive externalities. It makes people better and more productive. For every one dollar invested in water and sanitation, the United Nations Development Program estimated the return of up to eight dollars. Getting clean water to rural villages is the most effective strategy to help the poor. Water is an investment opportunity. As a club good, you see, club good is the, the swimming pool. I heard uh, uh, IHA wanted to, to make a swimming pool, but not yet, eh? so, but invest in it because it, it's fun and then water becomes really a positive externality. As a club good, as a merit good, as a source of hygiene and sanitation, but also as a source of innovation and a public good, as a source of life, of course. Water has many identities, but that makes it also typically a Fuka phenomenon. Heavily contested issues are also known as wicked problems. The writer also referred to that. And a wicked problem in water also can be referred to as a tragedy of the commons problem. We know that we have to take either individual or collective action because we see the problem, but we do not act upon it. This is also known as the bystander effect. Psychologically speaking, the bystander effect is also known as the choice paradox. When confronted with complex issues, we tend to get paralyzed rather than take action. The rabbit on the road, maybe you can see that. When realizing that he's crossing a road with heavy traffic, rather than running away, the rabbit freezes and probably gets killed. So negative frames and doom scenarios only add to the paralysis. But in this complexity actually lies also the solution. Let me chew on this insight a little bit more. There are simple, complex and wicked problems. Uh, wicked problems do not only resist solving, they even resist defining. Technical and organizational approaches are always part of the approach, but the real approach lies in the societal road. Water is a wicked problem, because it is public, it is private, it is a social good, and it is that at the same time very often. So no one size fits all solutions, and many of the solutions lie beyond the realm of public, private or social provision of water. So what to do? Don't deny complexity. That is one of the topics. Find positive approaches and get the directly involved stakeholders, that is the system, into the room. 
wicked problems cannot be solved. This is one of the most frustrating conclusions I had as a scientist because I wanted to make a sort of quantitative analysis and then solve it and then everybody just had to quote me and then it's okay. But they cannot be solved, but they can be approached. Wicked problems require an open and an inquisitive mindset, a positive and action-oriented frame, no ideologies, no fixed roadmaps or technical solutions only. So you might ask, if you still follow my, my story, is that possible? And yes, I believe so. We are living indeed in interesting times. Enter the Sustainable Development Goals. They were issued in September 2015 with a positive frame to address the systemic problems of the world. And they were based on three years of multi-stakeholder involvement in which companies, civil society representatives, government, knowledge institute set up an agenda of action. The SDGs signal a paradigm breach with the past, for instance, compared to the Millennium Development Goals, in which only governments were held responsible for the world's most complex problems. And also, I would add, they are based on a much better understanding that positive frames, mind you, not naive frames, the clear goals are more energizing than negative frames and doom scenarios. So, the SDGs are actually based on the latest psychological insights, for which Richard Thaler, you can see his picture here, just this week, or last week, received the Nobel Peace Prize, uh, Prize for Economics. Behavioral economics. We might not have a fixed solution, but we can distinguish between better or worse approaches. Well, 17 goals with 169 subtargets. I would say complexity in the room. Water thereby, uh, as a wicked problem, can also be considered a wicked opportunity. It is related to sanitation and with clear ambitions. As you can see, 6.1, universal and equitable access to safe and affordable drinking water for all. Nobody left behind. But also, for instance, the reference on, on the 6.5 to management issues like water resources management. And this is the best place, of course, to study those issues. But they're also related to other issues, either as input, as consequence, or as condition. Again, in the complexity lies the solution. Water is a nexus issue. It can bring together people, companies and governments in addressing related issues as well. Water, therefore, is highly context dependent, no one size fits all. This is also acknowledged by, uh, by this institute that you are studying now, or have studied. I read in one of the brochures of the Institute that water cannot be, be seen in isolation and it is often a precondition for other goals. Therefore, together with the partners of IEJ, e, uh, also they contribute and they quote it also to other SDGs. And you quote a number here in the brochure like Zero Hunger, SDG 2, Gender Equality, SDG 5, Affordable and Clean Energy, number 7, Sustainable Cities and Communities, 11, and a number of others. So I studied the brochure very well, and I have an advice. I would advise you to also look beyond those and connect with other SDGs, in particular poverty and income inequality, because I think access to clean and safe water is strongly related to unequal income and the distribution of income. And of course, it is linked to one other topic. Maybe you've seen, if you study this, it's very easy. It should be linked to quality education. Uh, this might seem obvious, but I think it's worth mentioning, nevertheless. Uh, finally, the United Nations also formulated five basic principles that feed into all the SDGs. This is something that has been not, not generally acknowledged. And there are four, for instance, for peace, people, planet, prosperity and peace. And this already provides a much better basis for understanding, but also for checking progress in all these goals. Now, maybe you consider, the, I can call it professional bias, but I'm happy to see also that the central position of, the, of these is fifth number partnering. 
in its condition, but it's perhaps also a goal in itself. So if you have a look at this, I, I suppose you understand this complexity. We are full circle back to the adequate approach to wicked problems in a Foucault world. Do it together, and I would say then, water is not a public or a private or a social good. <coughs> Our proposal for today is water is a partnering good. Combine public and private and get all the stakeholders in the room. Otherwise, the goals will never be reached. This especially applies to water. In order to manage the many potential conflicts around the issue, the UN, for instance, concludes that the issue of water and sanitation cannot be solved by any of the societal actors alone. They state, and I quote, effective water and sanitation management also depends on the participation of all the stakeholders, global as well as local. So my final advice, see water as a partnering good, more than anything else. Go beyond public, private or social. And luckily, as you can see on the slide, this is acknowledged throughout the world with water-operated partnerships. Of course, this institute, the PPP facilities in the Netherlands, uh, a, a variety of partnerships, hundreds of them we can count. So finally, of course, what does it mean? Water as a partner, as a partner in good. It requires collaboration between state, governments, local, international, national market, first, multinationals, but also local companies and value chains, and communities, all of NGOs. The second point, go slow and get far, but do it together. Or, put it differently, if you want to go fast, go alone, but if you want to come far, go together. Working together is not a luxury, as many people would say, but it's a necessity. There's no alternative. We also call that the TINA principle, initiated by Shell, by the way, at a certain moment when they were heavily attacked on, on, their, on their environmental policies. There was no alternative. But that requires, say, well, we should work together, so we should trust each other. So one of the big issues next to a, a, a whole list of issues that we can address is the trust issue. And I can tell you this. If you have different interests, why would you trust you, others? If you, uh, you, why would you trust yourself, that you are consistent in your own policies? So the issue is not, it's, it's about trust, but actually we have to return it. We have to say, you don't partner because you trust each other, but you trust each other because you partner. I hope this is deep enough for today. <laughs> this requires, of course, learning about complex problems, a safe space to discuss and research. I think this would be the safe space. So, concluding, we are living in interesting times. So I wish you lots of insightful collaboration. Good luck. Thank you very much, uh, Rob, for uh, this very um, interesting uh, speech uh, of you, and also for uh, introducing us into the FUCA world. The good news, of course, is that this institute definitely will not educate its students to become bystanders, and definitely will not let them reside in the tragedy of the commons, but will follow your path of uh, partnerships. So thank you for, for that, for sharing with us your insights uh, on this day. Then, it's my pleasure also to uh, have another energizing part of this program because I would like to invite to the stage the African Partnership Drum Band. And that means I would like to have Godwin, Michael, John and Salomon. Are they coming? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Godwin, Michael, John, Solomon from Ghana, Charles from Jamaica, Jeffrey from Kenya, and accompanied by Isaac from Ghana again, and Zadele from Swaziland. Give them a big applause so that they can May I consider that we're opening our classes with an exercise like this that we just heard. <laughs> a very energizing moment, I think, uh, for better results and uh, greater impact. Um, then it is also my honor now to invite to the stage the president of the Student Association Board, Mr. Juma Deke. Are you around? Are we expecting you? Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Juma Omar Mdeke from the United Republic of Tanzania. I'm serving as the Student Association Board President. I'm here having a small speech, welcome speech, uh, for the new MSc students. Here you go. <laughs> Your Excellencies, Rector, professors, distinguished guests, IHE staff, fellow MC students, participants, ladies and gentlemen. I am extremely honored and privileged for getting this opportunity to welcome you all who are here in the first in the auditorium this uh, afternoon, and especially the new MC students for the 2017-2019 academic year to our prestigious, very important institute, IHE Delft. We are welcome. On behalf of South, I would like to welcome <coughs> all of you to IHE place where water professionals meet. This gives us an opportunity with great, uh, uh, to socialize, to interact with one another from different continents and countries with great uh, cultural diversity. We, are, we have new students from about 40 different countries and the number is more than 100 students. So you can see the diverse culture we have. IHE is a purely multicultural environment. There is a Swahili proverb that says that, Majinu Hai, by definition is, water is life. So water connects us all here. I here congratulate you, new students, for successfully getting a seat in the reputed and prestigious Water Institute in the world. This is truly is a first step towards following your dreams and achieving your goals as a water professionals. And since for the next 18 months you are going to be part of the Institute, I heartily wish that you imbibe the best knowledge and experience from here. Since I have known IHE, it gives me immense pleasure to inform you that the lecturers have been imparting quality education since inception. The development of a quality education system largely lies on the committed members of the Institute quality infrastructure, supportive administrative staff, large pool of learning resources, and last but not least, hardworking and brilliant students. <laughs> you will be glad to, to hear that IHE primarily focuses on making students good and successful water professionals through Strate strate strategic teaching of both theoretical and practical aspects during the course of education. 
I'm highly encouraged to share that many of the graduate students who have graduated from IHE are now occupying higher position in several renowned organizations all over the world. A good example will be seen soon, Dr. Satyed Morwanto from Indonesia. <laughs> Who will address us in this audience soon this afternoon? They have succeeded in many, aspects, in many respects, and I'm very certain that all of us, current students, as well as you who are new students, will also reach the same peak of the success and even higher. Apart from educational betterment, there are opportunities to participate in extracurricular activities here in Aichi Delft. It's like sports, games, and cultural activities, and events like African Nights, Euro-American Nights, Asia Nights, where you showcase your cultures you share your cultures, you show us what you have from your back home. Remember that, we have, as we said, we have more than 40 countries this year. We seniors, we are, we are more than 61 countries. Assume one country is one culture. How many cultures do we have? The assumption is it might not be good, but assume one country is one culture. So we have more than 40 culture, plus that 61, so we can see how diverse IHE is. <laughs> Uh, starting from November, next two weeks to come, Aichi usually reserves courts for volleyball, basketball and, foot, basketball, and football. So for the, for the sports ladies and sportsmen, you are highly welcome to participate on sports. As we believe that most of the sports become, it's because it's physical activities and also keeps you fit and make your mental balance. I'm certain that you will find these 18 months at Aichi Delft the most inspiring times of your life. I hereby wish you all a very happy and academically fulfilling journey ahead and an outstanding stay in Aichi Delft and the Netherlands in general. Again, I wish you all success successful, rewarding time here at AHE Delft. Karibu Nisana. In English, you are warm welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you, Juma, for your warm welcome words, and also your aligning of the uh, diversity agenda. Um, I would like to invite now Maria Laura to the stage, who is our alumni officer, because she will um, start the introduction towards the alumni awards ceremony. Thank you very much. Okay, distinguished guests, alumni, participants, new students and colleagues. I would like to congratulate all new students on the commencement of their studies at Aichi Delft. But today we celebrate also the Alumni Day. Because many professionals, our alumni also started their studies at Aichi Delft one day in October, like you. Aichi Delft has more than 15,000 alumni worldwide and they form the biggest water professional network in the world. They are our best ambassadors, and we are very proud of them. In this ceremony, we have the pleasure of awarding one of our exceptional alumnus with the fifth IHE Delft Alumni Award. The award is given annually to an alumna or an alumnus who has had an illustrious career and has been a role model for other water professionals. 28 alumni nominations were received this year and the jury members were very impressed with the overall quality of their work and proposals. Three made up a very a strong show list, list and they are from Sri Lanka, 
Danish Bunatleke, who studied in 2005. From Mozambique, Professor Dr. Alvaro Carmovas, who studied in 1981. And from 1997, Ms. Wori Ramana from Sri Lanka. Congratulations to all of them, and I would like a little applause. But now the moment has arrived, and I would like to invite to the podium our Rector Professor Eddie Morse to announce the winner of the IEC Delph Alumni Award 2017. Uh, thank you, uh, Maria. And uh, I, I think um, the, the real um, secret has been spoiled a little bit, but uh, still, I, th I think it's uh, something worthwhile uh, to stand uh, still for. And uh, I have the honor to uh, say something and uh, a couple of words actually about that. But uh, before I do that, um, I think uh, I would like uh, again actually uh, to, to welcome uh, all of you. But in this case, the award winner is um, Dr. Ari Sidianti Murwanto from Indonesia. But before I hand you the award, I want to say a few words, if you, if you don't mind. And then later on, uh, we would like to hear also something from your side. Um, but uh, I, I think we prepared uh, this award winning and I think what was uh, and is very nice is that uh, Dr. Moranti didn't come alone, but uh, I would like to also welcome his wife, uh, I would like to welcome his family members and I would also like to welcome very much the delegation from Indonesia that he brought with him. And so I think it's nice that uh, such a big community can, can celebrate uh, a prize like this. So very welcome. And, uh, <laughs> Then, um, Dr. Ari Muwanto is uh, at the moment Director General of uh, Highway Engineering at uh, the Ministry of Public Works and Housing in Indonesia. And he's the former Director of Water Resources Management. He completed uh, first uh, hydraulic engineering here, and at that time it was still an 11 month course. Um, we had a discussion yesterday, as I think there is there's still a, a wish to actually have this 11-month course uh, returned here. We'll talk about that uh, later. <laughs> but uh, that was not enough. Uh, so um, uh, Dr. Morwanti followed that up uh, by uh, doing his uh, MSc degree here. And uh, that MSc degree was actually in, in what we call at the moment uh, hydroinformatics. Um, I think Professor Dimitri is sitting over here who is now leading uh, this topic. But I think that was, uh, say, uh, the, the ground for him uh, to have a, a very ambitious career. And just to say a few words uh, about that, so he has been working as a civil servant at the Ministry of Public Works and Housing since uh, 1986 and has held uh, several uh, positions at the Ministry. He has a consistent proving track uh, record of uh, professionalism, responsibilities, integrity and commitment to the institution where he's working. His commitment to improve uh, the living conditions in his country, his academic performance and professional leadership in Indonesia are very highly respected. Dr. Muwanto has accomplished important projects in Indonesia, and I just name a few of them, it's not a full list. Uh, one is an, um, he uh, included an uh, integrated research program which covered technical and social aspects related to the development of urban areas in Indonesia. Some examples are in Bangor area, Simaranga, and other um, cities. He collaborated on the writing of guidelines on urban polvo development in Indonesia, one of his uh, specialties. The impact of land subsidence and sea level rise mean that polders are one of the options to be considered to solve the flooding problem in coastal cities. These guidelines are used by practitioners in Indonesia and also today, and I will come back to that uh, later on as well. His latest contribution is the design of traffic management system along the highway on northern Java, where as a result there were zero accidents during the last uh, Eid holiday, in comparison with so many victims in previous years. And uh, I must say that, that uh, one of the worries for me was uh, to learn that he was moving to another ministry, and especially the Ministry of Transportation. 
But then uh, yesterday we had a sort of a pre-talk a little bit then. Uh, what I also learned is that uh, uh, I think one of the very nice things that uh, Dr. Nanto is uh, implementing at the moment is actually the first multipurpose dike in Indonesia. And uh, that dike is, uh, I think, uh, it, it will come along uh, one worth a visit of all of you to come to Indonesia to, to look at it. But also the interesting part is there that what he's doing is uh, from his position as the Ministry of uh, Traffic, he is um, working at the solution for the traffic, but he's also looking at uh, sea level rise and how this dike can be used to protect the area for sea level rise. So he's trying to solve two problems. And as if that's not enough, uh, the other part that comes into there is that behind this dike there will also be a pole area, which then can be used both uh, to prevent uh, floods for the city, but also enlarges actually the capacity to have food production in there. So I think it's a very nice example where uh, not only the present position that he's in, but also his knowledge from the other positions, especially at the Ministry of uh, Water Resources, is being brought together uh, to come up to those solutions. And um, though I think you need a discussion with Rob later on if it's really a wicked problem, but I do think this one approaches it very much. And I do think we're also working for solutions, so then it falls off the list of being a wicked problem. But uh, then it becomes a complex problem, which is, I think, an interesting one to be solved as well. So, <laughs> congratulations for that one. Then, if that was not enough, I think what's also interesting is that under his leadership, uh, many staff members from the Ministry of Public Works and Housing were encouraged to study at IHC Delft, and we really appreciate that. So, as a result, IHC Delft has many successful alumni who are professionals and professional leaders at the Ministry of Public Works and Housing. Indonesia is, in fact, the country with the highest number of IHC Delft alumni in the world, and many of them are working at the Ministry of Public Works which I think is also nice to see that the people that are trained here, and I think there's also an invitation to the present students sitting here, is uh, going back to the professionalism where you're coming from and contributing actually uh, to doing that. And I, I fully wish that all of you will follow the footsteps of uh, our present alumni winner and also your predecessors there. So clearly Dr. Moranti is an excellent ambassador of IC Delft, often leading the collaboration between IC Delft and the Ministry of Public Works and Housing in the field of research and capacity development on water, and I hope that can uh, be continued. So congratulations from IC Delft on your remarkable achievements during your career, and thank you for being such a loyal ambassador of the Institute, and I do hope that uh, we can continue, and I do hope that you are going to make some future steps into this. So with that, I would like to offer you a small gift. So um, this is the, the, the prize. Yes. Everybody is convinced that balance <laughs> in difficult solutions is sometimes there. I think it's a safer hand like this. But what I would also would like to say is, is that uh, having somebody uh, doing a career like this is something that you can't do alone. And uh, for that, I would really like to thank also your wife for allowing her to have you here, but also to have you be enabling you to all, all these steps. So I would like to hand over the flowers to come in. That uh, I would like to uh, give the floor actually to Dr. Moranto for his uh, his speech.
Excellencies, Rector of uh, IAC, Ambassador of the Republic of Indonesia, or Professor, or new student of, uh, I think, master student of uh, IAC, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is a great honor for me, as well as a big surprise for me, to have this award. I never imagined before. If I may, back 29 years ago, as Professor Moore mentioned, I joined a short course program with the help and or with the support of the Nufik uh, scholarship. I choose the branch D as far as I know. <laughs> Just remember, it is concerning about the computational, experimental and computational on hydraulics. Once I finished, I got an additional scholarship from Laminghe Foundation. With this uh, scholarship, I finish my master degree. I stay here only 17 months, but it is a great time for me in shaping my career after that. It gives me confidence knowledge and experiences and these experiences always inspired me until now for example i do agree with the lecture we have a problem with the flood we have a problem with the traffic jam too much and too dirty water. But I confident to face it because I gain experiences here at ISC Delft. If I may share my experiences to all my colleges, new ISC students. MSc degree is important, but you may gain more than that. As the president mentioned here, we can learn about culture because here we together, we have students for all over the world. Within 17 months, I learned how to discuss and how to negotiate with uh, several or various uh, students with the different culture. And it made me never afraid when we discuss with them. Yeah, until now. <laughs> and we know, and I could uh, discuss and find an agreement, as Professor mentioned about that, about partnership. It is a great time, a great time for me. For all of my achievement, I have to say thank you very much for the ISE, to all the professors, and to all of my colleagues here. I bring my family and my colleagues from Indonesia, if you don't mind, please stand up, because
but also they learned yesterday they went to Del Tares a very prominent uh, institution that I worked for six months there while I am uh, doing my uh, MSc. It is a great institute and I want them also uh, to learn with them. And I also ask them to go to Rotterdam Harbor because we will develop many new ports in Indonesia because we have more than 17,000 islands, big and small in Indonesia. Once again, thank you very much. I will not, never forget this moment. Thank you very much. So, Victor, dear uh, Dr. Muranto, I would like to really thank you for a very nice and I think also very personal speech. So, thank you for your, your kind, uh, kind words there. And um, what I would like to do is, uh, I would like to use this opportunity to uh, officially declare the academic year as open. So, um, I hope that all the MSc students have a really a good start. And actually, uh, to um, celebrate that a little bit, there are uh, a couple of things that I would like uh, to ask. Uh, one is that um, here in the room, uh, we have a number of uh, the ambassadors from the different countries, from the, the students, uh, or representatives of the embassy. So what we would like uh, to ask the students from the different countries, so if you go out of the room here, there are a number of tables with uh, small flags of uh, your country there. So if you find uh, a table with a flag, please go there. It's not only for the students, it's also for the seniors, uh, plus the, the fellows, uh, plus uh, the staff. And uh, please uh, have a, a meeting with uh, the ambassador or the representatives of the ambassadors. Also, uh, I know that uh, there are a number of uh, ambassadors and representatives of the embassies who not yet have students here or who have had students here but there are students less at the moment. I would like to invite them to one table where is the UN uh, flag, uh, because I would like to have a, a, a short talk uh, with them how we can change this situation. <laughs> so you're very welcome. Uh, and then uh, all uh, the other people who are here are also, uh, of course, not left alone, but I would like to invite them to go downstairs and, and go uh, to uh, the restaurant area where uh, they are all um, being waited for to join us in a reception over there. I can promise you that I'll also bring all the ambassadors and the other people also downstairs. So we'll join you shortly. So please leave something to drink for us as well. <laughs> so with that, uh, I would like to, to thank you all and uh, I hope to see you downstairs in a little while. Thank you.